Hi everybody, Carl Kasgard uh, calling you from Arnprior, Ontario, the Halifax Central Nerve Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're here to give you an update, a report on everything that's been going on. Our tribute to our RCAF veterans in this 100th year of the Royal Canadian Air Force. And we're going gangbusters here. And uh, with me is uh, Scott Knox, the uh, chief engineer for our Halifax bomber rebuild. And it's all for the Bomber Command Museum of Canada out in Alberta. And uh, we're uh, going, uh, making good progress here. So what do we got, Carl? Um, we've got a sequence of photos here. Let's uh, tell a story. Sure. Well, you know, we've already told about the great progress here. And of course, uh, you know, we've got many shots of the evolution of this center section. And um, it, uh, I wanted to remind folks, this center section came from a derelict scrapyard in Malta. And Im imagine my surprise at finding enough center sections to start a Halifax. Mm -hmm. So we bought everything for a dollar a pound. It's like over 10 years ago. Got it over here to Ottawa and then... Uh, this crazy man called Scott Knox decided, I can do this. Mm -hmm. And so you've built up your team, you're making great progress. And uh, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping the folks will appreciate the magic that's going on here. But I need to add more magic to your magic. Excellent. And uh, so at the Bomber Command Museum of Canada out in Nanton, Alberta, just an hour south of Calgary, we have stored a lot of the uh, special parts that aren't necessarily the core airframe. And I wanted to tell you about that. And, uh, you know, you can see that we've got, uh, we've got 11 Bristol Hercules engines now. Right. And um, between those 11, we can make four runners. Right. And three of them are low, low time, ready to run engines already. Right. And... Uh, so we've got those engines we're up to speed on working on those engines fuel ignition uh, all of that good stuff we've got it um, now the other thing that we have which we didn't have like a year and a half ago is we've got 12 brand new propeller blades mm. that fit the halifax and uh, as you can see on this image here you see the left hand blade uh, below the maple leaf there. Mm -hmm. That is the original factory tag. Those are brand new blades no out, of, kidding. out of a crate. Wow. And so uh, that's a trial fitting of the Halifax hub uh, propeller dome and the three blades. And mm -hmm. I've got more blades coming from England from the 12 that we were able to acquire. So that'll be in the coming months in the springtime of uh, 2024 excellent and uh, so that's the propellers and engines there's a, a you know how we like to do 3d and CAD mm -hmm. and that's that's our those are our friends for rebuilding mm -hmm. this is a 3d printed Halifax propeller accurate to within like one millimeter mm -hmm. and we built that as a prototype and the second one that we built of this, these propellers, this 3D printed propeller, it gained us a tail section of a Halifax, and I'll explain that in a minute. Right on. So, um, but the big news is that at the Yorkshire Air Museum, they had an outer wing panel that will fit a Halifax out behind the hangar, and I was able to strike a deal with them for some 3D propeller blades, we give them the propeller blades, right. 3D printed, for their static Halifax, right. and we got the outer wing panel. Excellent. And this was uh, earlier in um, uh, 2024, uh, and uh, so that was brought to our storage yard in mm. uh, Thirsk, Yorkshire. Right. And it's, it's on a, um, a cradle now waiting for shipment. I, I wish we could get the Queen Mary. Yeah, yeah, the Queen Mary is rare. Great, eh? wow. Yes, yes. But uh, so this was a wonderful gift donation from mm. the Yorkshire Air Museum. And uh, uh, now we'll just move on to uh, 
This is uh, my good uh, colleague, uh, Patrick Smart, who's been a great supporter over in Thursk, Yorkshire. Mm -hmm. And he said, Carl, your wing panels can come to me at my business yard. Mm -hmm. And Patrick is the proud son of a Halifax combat pilot that was awarded the DFC. Wow. So he's got a vested interest in helping make a Halifax come into reality. Beauty. And uh, so he's the one that built the cradles. And uh, let's go to the next one. And this is a real cool shot. This was lifting it out off the Yorkshire Air Museum trailer and putting it on the truck mm -hmm. to go to Patrick's house. Right. And so you will you can see the slowly, gently, don't drop it. Yeah. And then once we had repositioned, we loaded it on the truck. And Potter's plant hire uh, is a big... Uh, lorry company, trucking company in England, mm -hmm. and they've agreed to sponsor the ground transport of the Halifax wings Excellent. across the United Kingdom. But wait, there's more. So here's uh, uh, the outer wing panel at uh, Patrick's house being um, uh, staged, mm -hmm. uh, set up on the lifting crate, uh, sorry, the cradling. And uh, let's go to the next one. And here's the final assembly, and you can see the triangle supporting the outer wing panel through the main attachment points of the entire airframe. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's a, a good one. And uh, now there's another uh, museum had another outer wing panel 25 feet from the other side of the Halifax. Good. On and the right hand wing. So we were able to get that. Now, do you see the wealth? Look at that. 53 feet of wing. That's a lot of and wing. And look to the far right. You'll see they gave us a uh, wing tip. Great. For the outer wing. So even if we don't, we're missing one wing tip, we have a template. Exactly. For building another. Excellent. That's great. And That's great. Uh, then uh, this is, they're finally assembled on the cradles. And the big announcement is the Royal Canadian Air Force is going to haul these wing panels on these cradles to uh, Trenton, Ontario, right. RCAF base, and then we will truck them up to Arne Pryor, Ontario. I think you've heard of that place. Apparently. Yes. And um, we'll be able to use them to add on to what the magic that you're doing here already. Right. And so uh, we're so pleased to... Do you know how many tens of thousands of hours we're looking at? If yes, we had, I do. If we had to reproduce? <laughs> yes. So these were uh, great gifts from the Yorkshire Air Museum and the RAF Museum. Yeah. Now, even though we, they're, they're complete panels, we do have to mo modify them a little bit because the donor aircraft and the Halifax were slightly different. Yes. And... In the years coming, we'll we'll tell you how we're going to do that, but um, it's it's going to be it's going to be tricky. We'll we'll pull it off. I'm I'm confident, but we're going to have to take these and modify them a little bit to make them fit. And then we, what's still missing, is the intermediate sections between yes. what we have here and these. Um, now we have some plans. Um, maybe you'll be lucky enough to to find some intermediate panels in the meantime. What do you what do, what do I look like, Houdini? Come on. <laughs> You're going to save me a lot okay. of time and effort. So Houdini found these two. Yeah, yeah. So uh, I'm going to keep looking for you, okay? Keep, keep looking. Okay. Yeah. And uh, let's go to the next one there. And uh, this is, you see, okay, it's kind of a goofy picture, but do you see that red section in the middle? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and coming this way as it comes out towards the rudder, mm -hmm. um, that we found on a Dutch island in North Holland. Okay. And we traded, remember that 3D printed propeller? Right. We put a 3D printed propeller in a crate. We sent it to Holland. We delivered the crate, the propeller in the crate to the guys on the island, and they gave us show the next one. Mm -hmm. They gave us this horizontal stabilizer for the Halifax. Right. And um, I know it doesn't look like much, but, uh, you know, there's a guy named Scott Knox told me, Carl, if we have the real parts, we can use the blueprints and the parts to reproduce. 
So uh, this uh, will be a, a great blessing to the tail section. And you can see the spars are still on the tail section. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And on the far left where the guy is stooping over, that's where the rudder is attached, right, right. over there. Right. So uh, there's great... Uh, great anticipation here yep. and this is now in storage thanks to hugo loudon in england he went to holland with his pickup truck and his trailer and he picked up all these parts right. for the tailpiece and the rudder and the other stuff that we got from the dutch people right and he brought it back to our storage area in england yeah these aren't these aren't tiny i mean the tail surface, the empennage on it at Halifax, is a large piece of construction, you know. Yeah. And uh, it, what, what did that weigh? That must have been pretty substantial. Uh, it wasn't bad. It was, uh, I think, three or four hundred pounds. Three or four hundred pounds. So there was uh, four yeah. guys had to lift it. Yeah, no, to but, me, that, that's, uh, uh, that's chunky. Yeah. yeah so, and, 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 you know, that's just what's left over. So when, yeah. that, when that part is complete, yeah. that's the, equal to the size of a, a wing for a Cessna 172 or yes. even bigger. Okay, now see in the, the center of that image you're looking at mm -hmm. that's that covered box right mm -hmm. in there there's four giant bolts still in there where right. it attaches to the fuselage right right so that could be helpful to engineering absolutely i mean i've studied the the plans for this and you know the plans are well they're great but nothing beats having the part in your hand we can actually disassemble this yeah. and get clues as to how it was it was fabricated um, because you know the the plans don't give us any real clue on how to build the, i shouldn't say it. they give you a partial story yeah. but, but the but if you've got the piece in your hand you can think about it, the toolings and fixtures yeah. that are required to to actually then you the have the full story you've got the and full a possible story. solution that's right yeah, yeah that's right no it's, it's uh very helpful so and let's go to the next one there and oh Okay, so uh, years ago, I went to a scrapyard in Cheltenham, and I found the unique uh, leading-edge cowling, what you see, the big circle in black, mm -hmm. and that goes on the front of a Bristol Hercules engine for a Halifax. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so I got five of them out of the scrapyard, and this is the first one, and I rebuilt it. All I had to do was take the 250 bolts and nuts apart. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I rebuilt that, and it's now in the Nanton Air Museum, the Bomber Command Museum, and this will be fitted later on for trial purposes. Right. Now, that was part of the exhaust system. Yes. So there's some steel and aluminum, or is it yes, all steel? Yes, uh, steel in the heart center, Right. and then uh, inner skin is aluminum-shaped, mm -hmm. right. and outer skin is aluminum-shaped. Right. So it was a bear cat to wrestle with, mm -hmm. but uh, I was able to do that. And, of course, you can see that's number two engine mm -hmm. on the yellow uh, trailer. Yeah. And... Uh, that, uh, that turned out really well. Yeah, yeah, and it's good. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, thanks to you and your, your uh, eagle eye, mm. we found this air intake that looked like it could be a Halifax Hercules engine air intake. Mm -hmm. And so I followed up on your lead. And I uh, talked to Steve in Northern California, you know, mm -hmm. California. What, what, what is that part doing there? What is that <laughs> Hercules engine part doing there? Mm -hmm. And they scrapped f two Solent flying boat airplanes. Right. Right. And this was the last piece left. And guess what? The short Solent flying boat used exactly the same air cleaner, right. uh, air scoop, mm -hmm as the Halifax. Right. So uh, we uh, bought that, had it shipped up to Canada, and I've had it 3D scanned, and we're going to go through the evolution process of scan, file, CAD, and we're going to make four more. Right, right. So little tiny things, but it's all adding up to... Oh, yeah. Uh, we've got it. Yeah. And... Because uh, that's a complex... It looks simple, but that's actually a fairly complex part. The curves and the... the the, yes, the, the intake section there, that's uh, not an easy thing to form. And, and a drawing, now there's a really good example of where a drawing just won't do it justice. Yes. Right? You have to have the part uh, either to scan and to make, at some point, the molds or the forms to make that part. Or you 3D, part, 3D print the part out of aluminum, or sorry, out of steel or some other material. Right. So that's a, a welcome addition. And the next photo 
you can see where it is. There's Hugh, mm -hmm. and Hugh is a talented guy. His um, uh, he was a professional mechanic on the giant coal trucks in oh, yeah. Sparwood, mm -hmm. uh, British Columbia, and he was. Uh, He's retired now, and he's helping me with the Bristol Hercules. Right. And what a, uh, a talent he is. Right on. A and he knows, you know, I, I'm uh, I'm his assistant now. Before mm -hmm. I was the only guy. Right. So uh, Hugh is uh, helping us, and you can see the red arrow there. That's where the air scoop goes on the Bristol Hercules, and so we just trial fit it to see uh, right. how it fits on there. And uh, so that shows you the air scoop. Right. Because these engines didn't have that scoop. They had a, a completely different scoop, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. It, so for nice. this, uh, yeah. yeah. And so now we have a prototype, a template for mm -hmm. building more. Excellent. And, and then I've got a final photo here. Uh, Carl is dumb enough, or maybe smart enough. He's uh, working on the Bolton Paul tail turret now. Mm -hmm. And we have uh, most of uh, what goes inside that tail turret, mm -hmm. that rear turret, for a Halifax bomber. But uh, I'm taking that all apart at this time, getting the plexiglass off right. without cracking it. Right. And then I'm going to refurbish that aluminium structure, cupola, right. Right. so that it's better. And then we are going to try piecing together all of the pumps and the uh, pipes and everything right. that's the structure inside. Do, do you have the mounts for all the, the, the guns? No, not all of them. No. And I've only got two 303 guns. Right. And right. if there's any RCMP listening, they have been dewatted, okay? <laughs> now, and you've got the, the, the tub uh, for the turret yeah. itself? Okay. Yeah. And then you've got the cupola that goes at, that attaches yes. to the aircraft. And years ago, I acquired a nine foot piece of lower tail mm. for a Halifax, and it includes the tail turret position. Right. So you see how, you know, yeah. several pieces coming together yeah. at Arne Prior, Ontario, or Nanton, Alberta, mm. we can uh, make this thing go. Yeah. So where did you find this uh, turret? Uh, this turret was in a guy's backyard in Swindon oh, okay. in the UK. Right on. And his daughter's name was Maisie. Okay. And Maisie played this, played inside this right. for years. Right. And she called it her rocket. Right. And so when the dad said, yes, I can sell you this uh, rear turret, mm -hmm. but you have to convince Maisie. Right. So I had, here's, here's a, an old guy trying to, uh, uh, strong arm an eight-year-old into uh, releasing her turret right. for a Halifax restoration. <laughs> so we call this Maisie's Rocket. Right. It's in really good shape. Yes, it's good. Not bad. And so, uh, you know, I'm working on that right now. You can see behind on the right the complete uh, nose mm. perspex right. for a Halifax. And I got that from an undertaker east of London, England. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, have you tried to polish that up and see if you can get... get yeah, it, get it, it? it will polish up. Uh, you know, it's cloudy right now, mm -hmm. but you can work with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, you know, I'm spread so thin, I'm not going to spend a thousand hours on it. Okay? No, 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 no. But, but, uh, uh, but you're, you're yeah. and cautiously optimistic you'll be able to get it to a decent shape. Yes, but uh, we may use it as a template right. for a mold to make brand new. Right. So those are all things that we're working Absolutely. in the future. Yeah. Again, you know, a drawing would not, would not do would not help you really yet you, you need that part to copy sure okay and uh so that's what i wanted to show you today is what we are doing in concert with you and your team excellent and uh so um you know we're we're going gangbusters we've got a factory we've got a shadow factory mm -hmm. uh we got uh, a private little shops doing good stuff for us absolutely and we're making progress uh yeah, yeah it's it's wonderful how so many people are helping out, whether it's, um, you know, um, giving their time or, or sharing their equipment or expertise with us, um, you know, and at, either at cost or below cost, you know, volunteering and whatnot. It, it's, it's brilliant. Without that support, we wouldn't be able to do this. That's right. And individuals have helped us along the way. Our main uh, uh, supporters are... Halifax 57 Rescue members mm -hmm. and members of the Bomber Command Museum of Canada. Right. They're all, they're sending in donations. They're helping us 
So uh, let's keep rolling on this and, uh, uh, you know, we'll stay in close touch and uh, yeah. we'll be able to... Uh, uh, give you a uh, a new report very soon. Excellent. One thing I wanted to say to any of the viewers out there, if you're watching this on YouTube, make sure that you like and subscribe. It's really, really important. Um, we're hoping to grow the number of folks that are watching these videos. I hope you watch them all the way through. That's important for the YouTube um, uh, algorithm. So uh, share like subscribe watch the videos from start to end and that's really 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 important because we uh, over and above our existing funding sources um we want to in the future see if we can monetize some of our content and because that'll go a long way to help the the, the cause as well so sure. make, make sure you like and subscribe well folks that about wraps it up for this uh, exciting program of the halifax rebuild by Halifax 57 Rescue for the Bomber Command Museum of Canada. And uh, uh, I wanted to tell you uh, a preview for next program will be a special program uh, from Belgium, Halifax LW682, you may have heard of it. We recovered the Halifax in 1997. We found the three missing airmen inside and we gave them full military funerals and we saved all the metal from Hal Halifax LW682. And that metal, that aluminum has gone all over the world into Bomber Command memorials. So we're going to do a special program with our friends in Belgium on uh, uh, the second week in May uh, from Belgium. And uh, it will be a very special memorial program and uh, if I can just ask you to please support us uh, donate contribute resources to our Halifax rebuild you can do it to Halifax 57 rescue or Bomber Command Museum of Canada and um, a final tribute is April the 1st in about one week will be the 100th birthday of the Royal Canadian Air Force. So we wish to continue our efforts and support uh, our memorials and our tribute to our bomber boys of the Royal Canadian Air Force and Bomber Command. And uh, we hope to uh, you will follow us. We hope you will support us. And remember to subscribe uh, to our programs and please share. And it's called Fundraiser 417-498. We're pressing on regardless. See you next time. Bye-bye.